how's it going, everyone? Wanted to circle back to a deck that I think has just gotten a lot stronger with the ban announcement of Red Purple Law, Red Black Sabo. Uh, I know it's been a minute since I have streamed or made a video about this leader, but um, I've been doing a lot of offline testing, uh, or rather off-camera testing, and he's been feeling really, really good. I think he has his worst matchup by far was Red Purple Law. I would say like it was 2080 into Red Purple Law. It was very, very, very difficult to win. And you know, with with him gone, I think the 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 field looks a lot more open for Red Black Sabo. Um, there are still some bad matchups. Uh, Green Yellow Yamato is a very bad matchup. I think the ability to kind of rest your blockers and how quickly the game goes is very, very scary. Uh, but it's winnable. It's absolutely winnable. And I think Doflamingo continues to be a bad matchup for the same reason that Red Purple Law was. Uh, but a little bit more manageable just because he's not as efficient as Red Purple Law and he can't bottom deck as quickly and as consistently as Red Purple Law. There's a bit more investment required. And so if those are the matchups that I have to be worried about, and I feel good into Moria, I feel good into Lucci, I feel good into Anel, I feel okay into Black Hill Luffy. I think Red Black Sop was a really, really interesting leader. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about the changes I've made to the deck. If you remember from an earlier video, I ran a list a little bit closer to this, which is more of a Straw Hat aggressive rush package, um, which I think is very, very strong and really interesting. The ability to kind of play Zoro for on go second, play Zoro, swing five, swing six with leader, and now Zoro can't be KO'd. You can counter out of a swing, and then if they try to play like a a, a brook or something to kill it, it doesn't work. Uh, that is super, super powerful. Uh, but the revolutionary army list that I've been running has been very consistent and very, very powerful. And that's for a couple of reasons. Uh, the reason we run the Bello Betty researcher is because Sabo can be found. So this is the only black deck other than Garp that can find five drop Sabo, which I think is incredibly, incredibly powerful in this meta. This is one of the best black cards outside of Moria and being able to consistently find it whenever you want is really, really, really good. You can also find the eight drop Sabo, which is really clutch in certain situations. And you can also find dragon, which is also very good in certain situations. So being able to find five out of our, of our, nine top end cards plus five drops abo whenever we want is really great plus we can find our 2k we can find some rebecca removal um and then we can find this karasu which uh i think karasu is not generally played out in this deck but against nami i want to see four of these guys if you can get karasu out against nami you win that match for sure and we're going to be seeing a lot of namis in this little format before we get into op08 so yeah um this is a revolutionary revolutionary army red black sabo um we ideal curve really is on go second on her first second turn play haruda or bello betty haruda preferred uh next turn play kuzan or borsalino uh borsalino preferred unless we have haruda out and then kuzan so that we can put it down under leader our following turn we either play sabo or brook and then if you have a uh, brook or haruda in your trash you can play gecko moria put it down under your leader your board is safe if you don't you can play dragon um and if you have neither of those options and you don't have sabo either like you could just play another sabo blocker or something else to just fill out your board and wait until you get to that top end um but that's basically the curve and honestly it wins most games i took this to locals uh just yesterday and i i did get second place i won my first round against nami it i, I think i saw exactly what i needed i didn't see any brooks but i did see two karasus and so um they had like 10 cards left in deck it was and they had a they had pretty good draws, I would say. So that match was was good. Um, I won against a green yellow Yamato. I could have lost if they did their math a little bit differently on their final swing. I could have lost. Uh, and I will say that's like one of my worst matchups. It's very very difficult as as um, Sabo to to handle that. I even had three blockers on board, but obviously if they play Hody Jones, um, there was uh, an Egghead Luffy that I couldn't clear in the previous turn because I had established more blockers to deal with the fact that they were definitely going to play Hody Jones. And yeah, they they could have gotten it if they mathed that final swing a little differently um but we thankfully managed to break through and then win the game on the on the crackback round three we played katakuri and we did take the loss there um they we had like five five or four swings on board um they had three life their last life was an amru and they had two cards left in hand after the amru uh, unfortunately those were both two k's because i swung seven and nine and the seven could not break through to get that last life the nine would have because last life was a brick um and yeah, so the, the, the Katakuri game was very, very close. I think that matchup is a little bit worse than Anel. 
but um, you know, I think there's a couple learnings there about how I played. There was opportunities for me to save uh, some characters that I let go, and I, I think that was probably the biggest misplay. An extra string there could have could have gotten us the game. But overall, that was a close match. And then we we closed it out with a win against Verona, uh, which we completely won better. I played like another match with that Verona as well, and both times I saw Borsellino Sabo into Moria. And it was just, it was over. They, they literally could do nothing. Their hand wasn't great. And um, they couldn't clear board. They couldn't even swing because I had blockers up and, and Don under my leader. It was very, very one-sided. So the deck felt really, really good. I'm super happy with how it played out in person. I've been very happy with how it's playing out in Sim. Um, I'll throw in a game here so you guys can see how it looks. But I think this is a really cool deck. And I, I think it has some, some really strong potential going into um, this meta this uh, quick meta we have, especially at Nationals, uh, prior to OPO8 coming out. All right, let's jump into some gameplay. Okay, I did want to show the Bonnie matchup as well. It is, um, it is, I think, a matchup that people could be rightfully concerned about. But from at least my testing, it seems pretty, pretty good. I uh, definitely. Definitely not one that I'm super, super worried about. If you're wondering why I countered there, I now have Borsalino and Brook in my trash, which is really great for a potential Moria swing. We haven't seen one yet, but if we do see one, this um, is very, very good for us. All right, and so we will take this 6k because uh, I don't want to give more counter. And then I guess a... Oh, a Mihawk. Okay, this now means playing some Spice. That's fine. Depending on what they put out here, I may play the Luffy and put a Don under my Sapo rather than the Rook, but we'll see. Ah, uh, okay. I don't, I don't know what that was. The reason we have the Luffy, um, oh, I probably could have done 6k there, but that's okay. Took it anyways. The reason we have this Luffy, it's a two of, I don't know that I love this particular card. I think there's like a two card flex slot that I'm playing around with, and I'm trying this in it for now. I think getting around KO prevention is really interesting. Obviously, we are not Luchi, so we don't have as much cost reduction, but we do have the Kuzans and we do have the Surus, so there is a lot we can get out here. We run four of the Kuzan because... Kuzan and Borsalino are our best opening plays, so we want to see them as much as possible. Uh, I'll actually give a 2k here because I don't, I don't uh, want to drop that Borsalino in case I need to play that. Okay, so this is perfect. Um, actually, no, he is going to get around this, but that's okay. I think we'll start with... I think we'll play the Sabo this turn. So let's start with five. See what he does here. There's a couple of a couple of routes depending on how he handles this. Okay, he does rest that. Yeah, Hawkins is a great card. Hawkins is a really great card. The fact that it's all removal. Okay, yeah, that's good for us. The fact that it's all removal is, is nutty. Uh, Let's get some of those cards out of hand. I do not like how he's just been hoarding hand here. Miso in a Cavendish. Okay. Force it out. Cool. All right. We're looking good. Um, we could see a, an H drop come down here. Oh, played the Iso. It's trying to clear board a little. That's three 2Ks down. That's good for me. We may have to say goodbye to our clues on here, which I'm honestly comfortable with, uh, given how this board has developed. We, we can just play another one. That's fine by me.
Where's our top end? We're not seeing anything. We don't have a down under leader here, which is honestly not my preferred way to play, um, especially if he plays Hody Jones here. Uh, but I do think it is important to cycle because we haven't seen any of our top end, which is super unlikely, right? We run three dragons, two Sabos, and a four Morias. So there are uh, nine cards that could have been drawn at this point that we haven't seen any of. And this guy, I mean, this guy's clearly not seeing a lot because he's playing the body out off the kid. That's kind of crazy. That's kind of crazy. Uh, all right. I think to open here, we don't have removal, which... Oh, actually, actually, no. Wait, I have the brook here. What am I talking about? What am I talking about? So we are going to... He's going to rest the Luffy. Yep. Going to do that. That's perfect. Um, let's do a 7k here. We'll keep the Borsalino up, just one blocker. We have plenty of counter. I'm not super worried about losing. Next turn. Okay. All right, he's back to having a huge hand, which I don't love. I mean, if we win this, I'll be very happy with how it played out, but not thrilled with the fact that we haven't seen any top end here. I'm guessing there's two in our life. It's probably like a dragon and a Morian sitting in our life here. Another Hawkins. Hawkins is a dirty, dirty card. I want to see if he swings with this Hawkins here. Nope. Okay. No Hawkins swing. Uh, oh man, still nothing is crazy. I think let's start here. Let's kill his Bonnie. This brings us to eight. Get rid of those two Ks, I think. Yeah. It's the fourth two K. All right, he's out of two Ks. That is great. That is great. That is great. Let's see if I can get a block on the Hawkins here. Get rid of an Urush. That's great. Oh, okay. Paradise Waterfall. This guy's running his own little spicy list. I like it. I respect it. Okay. Uh, let's set up for next time. Let's do it this way. So that's six. Okay. All right. Um, I mean, I'm pretty confident we win here. Like maybe he 10 drops, um, but he can't clear board if he does that. And then we have Karsu now. So this is going to be a 4K. Okay. Hody Jones. That's fine. He's got no life. He's got... I have too much life. I win. All this counter in hand. Uh, I think we're going to see this life, and it's going to be all top end. I'm going to say no to that one. I am also going to say no to that one. Apologies. I have a lot of 2Ks, but, you know, if I had top end, this game would have been over faster. So it is what it is. And there's the Moria. Oh, wow. Nothing in our life, too. GG, man. GG. Nothing in our life. That's crazy. That's really, really crazy. Uh, there's Moria. The next card was Dragon. Okay. And then the next card after that was Moria. Okay. And then Sabo was shortly after that. So that's why we weren't seeing anything. They were all just hanging out in the middle of the deck. Um, but yeah, I mean, even without it, we, we did manage to get through. Uh, I know, obviously... His guy has a bit of a, you know, odd list, but he did play two Hawkins. He did play eight drop kid. Um, and, he, you know, I wouldn't say he saw like the absolute best curve, but neither did we. And we, we came out on top. And I think that's kind of how the matchup goes. You have removal options. You have some cost power reduction. So if he plays eight drop kid and you can't like KO it with a Brook, you can use Koala. And now it's a 5k. And so your regular swings are very powerful. You have Moria to bring back blockers, Kuzans, things like that. And then Dragon to go for game if they, like, 10-drop you and you don't have enough swings. So I think it's a pretty favored match. 
I believe I personally struggle when they just see the, the high roll curve of like Rouge, Cavendish into eight drop kid um, into 10 drop Dofi or like Zora or something. And it's, it's tough. The, I think the Rouge into Cavendish is tough because they're, they always have the Dawn up and then they always have like extra Dawn to play with on their turns. And it's, it's a really, really good combo. So um, if they don't see that, I feel really good about how the matchup plays out. Okay. I know that this is not the most exciting matchup for people, but I did want to show the gameplay against nami because it is very very important that people know how to play against nami because you're going to be seeing a lot of nami um we have an incredible incredible opening hand here the double karasu is so so good we're going to bring this down to four put a dawn under sabo i will swing 6k here they probably get out of it but it'll be the desert spada and one more card um i think something that I've learned against Nami is be very comfortable in these early turns, just not swinging if you don't have the math for it. Like that was kind of a greedy swing. I didn't need to do that because um, they could have gotten out of it a number of ways and potentially not been down that many cards. Uh, Desert Spada also would have let them sequence their life, which is very beneficial or sequence their top cards, which is very beneficial for Nami. Um, but I chose to attack and um, I thankfully wasn't punished for it too much. But uh, in, in the Nami I was playing at locals, there were several turns where I just passed. I put I put out characters, and then I didn't have enough Dawn to like do a, a 9k swing, so I just passed, and that's totally fine. Uh, ooh, this is a really good hand. I think what we're going to do here is kill Akaya, and then I think we'll actually... We'll do this. Oh, I, I'm actually going to do 8k there, but that's okay. Hey, Chuck, I don't need to push it. Let's grab another Kuma in case Kai comes back. I think I played the Brook next turn. Oh, I did not put a Don under our leader. That was a, that was a, a potentially disastrous play. We did have to give up the car suit for that, but that was that was for my own. See, this is why you got to pay attention. Uh, what is on the bottom? I don't really want to give them that back. Let's uh, let's do this then. <laughs> this math is a little awkward. They can get out of it with uh, the the nine K version of that. White snake. Okay. I mean, 33 cards left in deck. They're definitely going to take a, a hit here on the, the dragon. Um, their hand is not massive. We're, we're looking really, really good. And I even misplayed, and we're still looking very, very good. So when I say that this deck plays well in Nami, I really, really mean it. And if you think that, you know, Nami is like a high roll kind of solitaire deck and that the decisions you make won't really influence it, just like what's in their life and what their opening hand is, I think... You're very, very wrong and underestimating this matchup a lot. I highly recommend watching some of the Nami matches from this uh, Eggman stream of regionals a couple days ago. Um, I think this past weekend, they are really, really interesting. People hate on Nami, and I get it. I really do. But there is actually so much you can learn from watching those matches. And there's a lot of nuance that you see between... There's like a lot of micro decisions that happen when you watch a good Nami player and a good anything else player going at it. Uh, I thought I thought particularly the way Black Yellow Luffy is forced to play into Nami was very interesting. Um, so highly, highly, highly recommend checking out those matches. And yeah, I think um, I think this this is a sleeper deck, obviously. Like everyone kind of knows that Nami is good now. And I think people are just not have not fully accepted that they need to train into this deck. They can't just go into the matchup and hope for the best. Now, I'm wondering if... I think killing the Marguerite is more worth than putting three cards back for right now. So the reason I do eight here is so that I'm 4k over. Um, the seven is not really worth it. 
because uh, on seven they would just be able to do a two cost event, get to get to nine, and then that's it. But now they're forced to white cake, white snake, and then snake dance. Um, so that's actually really good for me here. And and they conceded, yeah. Um, I mean, uh, there really wasn't much more there. They had one dawn left. Um, I could have seven k'd. They would have been able to get out of the seven k and the nine k down to one life. Um, and I, I mean, in the next turn, they just kind of lost. I probably would have broke. There, there really wasn't much more there for this for this player to do. Yeah, I, I think this is a really, really favorable matchup for Sabo if you see a Karasu and then just like a couple of good top end cards like a Dragon. Um, you don't really need more to hear. Dragon's much better. Uh, Karasu's great. Um, Brook is obviously great. Uh, the Kuma helps just so that they can't bounce back Marguerite or Kaya or Gloriosa. Uh, but yeah. That is the Nami matchup. I'll put something else in here so it's not just Nami. Uh, but yeah, this is this is a good matchup and I think one that people should practice a little more. If you're worried about it, Red Black Sabo is your guy. All right, let's see what else we can find. All right, the match that I think is most relevant here, um, Luchi. This is the one that people want to see. So we're going to do... Uh, we keep this for a second. We're winning our die rolls today. That's really good. Uh, and our opening hand is awesome. Uh, unless he has a Brook in his opening hand, we're looking really, really good. Yeah, Brook would be a little bit annoying here. Drops a Sabo and a Tempest Kick. Yeah. Give him. The reason I counter out so early is because I want to try to get some things in trash for my Gekka Moria. Um, and of course, he does have the Brook. Which does kind of put a wrench in our plans. We can't really safely Kuzan. But um, that's okay. We have Gekko Moria and we do have Haruda in our trash. So that means when we do get we can get Moria on curve without worry that um, we will lose that Gekko Moria uh, to a crackback. So I'm fine to play this Kuzan and just draw the card. Um, he can start to waste his resources to try to remove that. And then we will clear his Brook and progress with the game from there. There's the Kaku, a second Sabo in trash. So I think that's probably all the Sabos. Don't have to worry about that. I'll give you another 1K, and then we'll take the next hit. There's the Anis Lobby. Okay, and then now he has to swing with Brook. I'll also take this hit. I'll kill the Brook, and then we're in a good spot. Hopefully we draw a Sabo or something, or Borsalino. Oh, okay. I'll take that. Uh, he may remove this. I'm totally, totally comfortable with that. I think he's got very little cards in hand. And so our first, the second we play Moria and he can no longer remove that Moria, like he's kind of cooked. He did find the Rob Lucci. There's a Moria in trash. Okay, now we don't need the Haruda either because we got the Brook. So we're looking pretty good. Um, he's going to Lucci here or... Maybe he has the five drop Kaku. Five drop Kaku, so he is holding out on that Mori a little bit. Or sorry, holding out on that Luchi a little bit. Uh he's saving it for another turn. Uh and here we go. Kuzan. Let's do the brook. And now we were able to draw a card, so we got some counter. Uh, next turn, we can either Sabo or we can do a second Moria, grab the Karasu. I don't love grabbing the Karasu. I don't think it does too, too much. Um, but I, I would I would like to see a Bors would have liked to see a Borsalino at this point in my trash. Um, so we may just play the Sabo just to establish a blocker and just kind of clear his board a little bit. But we'll see. It depends what he plays here. I think um, he's thinking about a Moria play. He doesn't have, I mean, he has Rebecca and Spandine in trash and Brook. So he could do like a Rebecca Palmapo Brook. Does he have Palmapo? No, he doesn't. He really doesn't have a Moria set up here. Um, so, you know, don't think that's coming down. Maybe he's thinking, okay, there's the two drop. Maybe he has a third eight drop Sabo and he'll try to clear that way. Or maybe he just plays Luchi here and then we save the Kuzan and then he might do like a finger gun just to clear it. If he kills the Kuzan, then I'm 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 comfortable um 
playing the Moria again to get the Kuzan back. Just because just it draws us cards. And hand advantage is huge here. This this also why is why I was saying you don't want to play the Moria on eight if you don't have a Brook or a Haruda in your trash, because he's gonna clear it. And then then you're really in trouble. But now he can. He's gonna try something. And he maybe will if he can KO something twice, he might be able to clear one thing, but he's not gonna clear double board here. Yeah, I mean if he he can sabo here. It's not gonna work. Uh, if uh, you did not know, if someone plays sabo against a red black sabo's ability, the red black sabo can save both characters. Hmm. He's thinking. If he does have Sabo, that's interesting. A three Sabo list feels aggressive, especially with Red Purple Law being banned. And in this lobby, I think Ennis Lobby makes Sabo so much better because you can just get things there so easily. My pro is thinking. All right, there we go. There we go. We got a swing out. That's great. That's really great. Let's do a one key there. I do love the addition of the timer. I think um, in future timers, I would love to see like a turn timer. I know Magic Arena does that, where you do have like a specific amount of time to take your turn. And I think that would make me so happy. Just like so you don't have to sit here for... 10 minutes while they think through all of these tiny micro decisions. Because uh, that's really what adds up to an overtime game, is when they take 5, 10 minutes every single turn to think through, do I swing here? Do I play this? Do I play that? Um, whereas, yeah. I don't, I think that's really where people need to move a little faster. Just make the, make the, make the call, think through it, make a call, and move on. Uh, okay, so I think he might try to Luchi and then Brook. But I don't think Brook can KO this. Because it's minus one and then KO zero cost. Yeah. Oh, no. He's just going to try to Luchi. And he's going to learn that Luchi does not work. All right. Um, huh. I think because he didn't swing with the Kaku, we do have to play a blocker here. Build Borsan trash. We'll get it with the Moria. Nice. Got it. Getting rid of the top was huge. All right. So everything is KO removed. So we only have to worry about swings. Oh, hey. He actually can't kill the Karasu because um, I, I sequenced that uh, differently. Or I got, I think I got the Karasu after I, I played Sabo. So that is can be KO'd. But I do have leader ability, so I just got to remember that if I use leader ability early to save from the swing, he can kill the Karasu, which isn't the end of the world. I think Karasu is just like a nice pressure card, but it's not it's not a game winner by any means. And then we can Moria Borsalino grab a Bello Betty if we want to search for a card. His fourth Spandam, huh? Or his third one? Third one, I guess. Another Tempest Kick, draw one more. Let's try to keep as much as we can on the board.
Yeah, okay, so he's going to kill the card, or try to kill the cards here. Which is a valid, valid strategy. I'm curious if he'll do... Yeah, I'm curious if he will um, try to swing with the uh, Spandums at all. He could do some real damage with Spandum here. Because I'm low on cards. Okay, no, he's just gonna just gonna play Moria. Moria, Rebecca, Rebecca's great. Do I have a Kuma in trash? I don't. Yeah, he's looking for those defensive options. Spandum guts a Spandeen, he gets a brook from trash, and then play the brook. KO the Karasu. Karasu lives. I wonder if I could just win here. He has a blocker, and it's so one block, so I have four attacks to get through three life. I think I win. I think I win. That's a block. So I can do eight, nine... Let's start with the six. Now that the block is gone, let's start with the six. Alright, there's the Spandine. Let's do seven. You don't have two two Ks. Let's do nine. And let's do eleven. GG. A lot of GGs today. I love it. Um, yeah, I think that was... Oh, there's Kumar. I think if we saw our Borsalinos, that game would have been even more one-sided. Uh, we saw him kind of late, and but most of, for most of the game, we kind of saw exactly what we needed to. And yeah, I, I mean, he can't remove anything. I think the turn he didn't swing with his Kakus and his Lushis was good, because I would have swung into those um, and just completely removed any board presence he had. Um, so be... Establishing a board here meant that, like, if I couldn't get through game there, I was actually really in trouble on the next turn. Um, but overall, I, I think this, this is very favored for Red Black Sabo. It's not free. I don't want people thinking that if they play Red Black Sabo, like Lucci and L, like these are free matchups. I think you could absolutely lose, especially if they high roll you and just keep playing a second and a third and a fourth Moria, uh, because you just don't run as much removal. But if you could keep the pressure up before that happens and then just go super wide you have a, a really, really good chance of taking it. I think it's maybe like 60-40 or 65-35. Um, so it's like pretty favored, but uh, absolutely not free. Definitely definitely can lose this if you are not careful, if you don't play right, and if you do not keep it down under your leader like I did with that Brook. So yeah, that is, um, that is Red Black Sabo in a nutshell. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. If you like the video, uh, please leave a like. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. We're going to you know, keep cracking away at these off-meta leaders. But yeah, keep an eye out on Red Black Sabo. I think uh, he might make a splash in the couple of weeks we have before OPO8 when Red Purple Law is banned. All right, guys, I will catch you on the next one.